and welcome to another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us this week, we have Tom Webster. Howdy, everyone. And Adam Jordan. Hi. So how you guys been this week? This crazy ass busy week. Oh my god, all the fucking gaming news. <laughs> Everything hit. Everything all at once. Been doing not much everything. outside of the news cycle? Uh, not a, a whole lot. I've played a, a couple little things here or there, but, but I haven't gotten too heavy into anything. Yeah. I played a little. You played a little. I installed, you- RAM. I installed more RAM today, though, on my computer, so... Did you go to downloadmoreram.com to download more RAM? Yeah, I downloaded it straight to it. All all I had to do was pay $19.99. It's free? Uh, It's easy. It's download more RAM. I didn't even have to use my credit card. They just asked for my checking account number and password. Oh, wow. That's 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 convenient. And they just take it right out. I don't have to do anything. Man, Man, I should should download more RAM today. They only asked me for my social date of birth. I mean, I thought (laughs) I was getting it easy. (laughs) <laughs> no, I didn't even I didn't even go to Micro Center. I ordered it on Amazon. Nice. I'm, I I have become fully integrated into Amazon Prime. <laughs> Amazon Prime is fantastic. But RAM replacement is the easiest thing to do on yeah. computers, but also the most unsettling thing. Yes. Yes. I would disagree I with could, that. Uh, Putting in a new processor is yeah. is a little more terrifying to me cuz you've got but, the big the big clamp lever. Yeah. yeah. But RAM is scary though. Like I saw my motherboard bend under the, <laughs> the pressure of putting it in. I'm like, Ugh, no. oh god! <laughs> yeah, it's it's scary. It's super scary. I've had some where it's not even necessarily the um, the board flexing. It's the fact that I feel I'm going to break my RAM because my mm. RAM's not getting in there right. Right. I've actually never felt that I would break a stick of RAM. Have you ever tried to break a stick of RAM? It's not no. easy. <laughs> I've never had a stick around my hand. Can't and say said, I've in- intentionally I tried it. to break a computer component. <laughs> That's not generally what I do with them. Oh, I've I've thrown away a, a lot of a lot of old shit that couldn't even be repurposed into anything. Like nice. we're talking eight megs of RAM. It's like <laughs> this is this is made of steel or something. Yeah, <laughs> probably not too far. Yeah, off. took that took that bad boy from eight to sixteen gigs of RAM. I uh, took the opportunity to dust my, the case out and clean the fans and use the trusty air duster. So I'm a very, very poor PC guy because I don't have canned air and I know mm. I need to do it. But yeah. luckily my build's not that old, but I got to get some. I really, really got to get some. Every yeah. time I take off the side of my PC case, and my, my house stays relatively clean. It's definitely not the cleanest place. And people who know me are yelling right now saying, Tom, you're a disgusting slob. Um, Your but- wife is yelling, Tom, you're a disgusting <laughs> slob. <laughs> For those of, uh, of you who don't know me, who are just podcast listeners, uh, I'm a very clean person all the time forever. Uh, but anytime I take off a computer case, it's like I'm the most disgusting human being in the world. How could I let this happen? Look at this. This is the evidence of my slob. It's just, it's, <laughs> of, yes, my yep. slob. It's when just my bad. first. <laughs> Say, when you can put your finger PC. in and just dust, like get, yeah. collect dust with your finger. <laughs> and not just like a little bit like you would a table that hasn't been dusted in a month, but like you're getting yeah. dust bunnies from rubbing it on top of your oh, graphics yeah. card. Yeah. No, yeah, it's no, my first my first PC, um, I had uh, it was when Battlefield Three came out. I think is what it was. Yeah, and uh, it was my first uh, gaming PC. I did not clean that out as often as I should have. And I, I'm playing this game, and I'm like, this it runs bad. It just doesn't run well. But my <laughs> my computer was f- like the specs were fine, and I would turn down the graphics settings, and it wouldn't matter. Turns out the the dust is encased over the entire processor and it's causing it to run really hot. Yep. So I cleaned that off and I got like 30 more frames per second and it ran beautiful after all of that. <laughs> I've been there. I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> I've had it a little different because I never realized how much of an issue heat is. I've oh, actually yeah. had mm-hmm. a wire block my CPU fan. Ooh, so my that's CPU bad. fan went, and I would be playing Ooh. Rocket League and I would be getting like 20 frames. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Wow. Yep. And then it hits me. I hear the kuh, 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 kuh. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> I open up my case. I'm like, you dumb bastard. You almost Whoops. cut a cable. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, yeah. have you guys ever had to, uh, speaking of the joys of PC gaming, being, you know, all of us being part of the PC Gamer Master Race, uh, have you guys ever had to dust out a console? No. no. Wow. I dusted the top of them. I yeah, have yeah, actually, I, I have dusted consoles on, on several occasions, uh, hmm. one of which was a Nintendo console, and I will dive into that, uh, but like six other times it was an Xbox 360, because you guys Ooh. remember how fucking horrible the build quality was on the 360. Any amount of heat would just set that thing off. And a lot of the time, after cleaning it out, it was okay if, you know, the board hadn't separated too badly at that point but the uh, biggest yeah, issue on several occasions pulled apart can air the whole thing put it back together get back to mass effect the big issue with the 360 was their placement of the heat sink they uh, yeah. located it directly under the disc tray so they couldn't get a big enough heat sink and enough airflow into it to cool it yeah i i remember a uh, a buddy of mine had had no idea how to work with warranties. Had never returned anything before. He was he was totally freaked out about calling Microsoft. Like just just give me the phone. Give me the phone. <laughs> yes, no, this isn't my my 360. Yes, I realize the warranty is three years out of date and a year out of date of the Red Ring of Death warranty. Yeah, you should still replace it. Hey, Brian, uh, Microsoft is sending you an Xbox tomorrow. Don't worry about it. Well, it's it's customer 101. They don't want. Yes, everyone knows they had issues. But yeah. if they keep good customer support, people still will buy it. Soon as it's yeah. shady, you lose them. Yeah. I, I yeah. love all the, the mom and pop, you know, eBay businesses that popped up overnight. Yeah, we will bake your 360 for <laughs> at 350 well, degrees for 20 minutes. <laughs> we will wrap it Just in a leave towel. Leave it on overnight wrapped in <laughs> towels. It'll be, it'll be fixed in the morning. Cannot believe that that was an actual fix. But hey, can't argue mm. with the results. Have you guys ever um, actually undone the X clip that holds on the processor? Yep. No. Yeah, there's a, they have a, they have a, propri a proprietary clip. Rather than having like bolts or uh, like a fastening, they had this X clip that would, like it was shaped like an X, and it would encompass all four of the bolts that went through the motherboard and hold them together. Rather than fastening each individual one, so you had to pry off all four to get it off, and then mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to put that clamp back on. It was kind of their oh. warranty protection. Right. Yeah. It was, nice. uh, it was not good. But, so that was our hardware minute. Tom, have you been playing anything this week other than, um, you know, feeling bad about your state of your PC? Uh, I have. I have, actually. Uh, I've, got, I've got two new games I'm going to save for next week because we've got a whole lot to talk about today. But I have played a little bit more Metroid Fusion. It's still one of the greatest games of all time. It's the greatest handheld mm -hmm. game of all time. It's by far the greatest <laughs> Metroid game of all time. But that's beside the point. Uh, I played <laughs> some Dark Souls. I actually got the chance to stream some Dark Souls this week. And I hey. had... By far, the worst fucking boss battle I have ever had in Dark Souls. So you know those moments in gaming where, where you beat the level or the boss or you unlock the achievement or something happens and you, you win, you encounter the good state, and you look back, you put the controller down and you say, I didn't deserve that. I don't deserve this at all. <laughs> I had one of those moments in Dark Souls. So I was stuck nice. at Ornstein Smo for... Three weeks, three and a half weeks, something ridiculous, right? To be stuck at a moment in a game and constantly mm -hmm. be throwing yourself at it. Uh, and I did beat them. Dark Souls is sort of multiplayer in your single player game. So I'm at the boss door. I summon the NPC to help me fight Solaire. And then I see another summon sign. I'm like, oh my god, I can have multiple people. So I summon this random dude. And I wish I knew his name. I should have taken a screenshot. I summon this random guy in there. I have buffed up all my weapons, all my armor. I am ready to take this fight. Three people versus two people. We're all buffed to hell. We've got this. No. No, we don't. It was honestly <laughs> the worst boss fight I have ever had in any game, ever. Like, both of my companions die. Like, we, we get down to the last super mega guy, and both of my companions are dead. Me and, and Ornstein, the last guy I'm going against, are one hit away each from total annihilation. Oh, and, no. And if I lose, I'm probably going to uninstall the game because I just can't take this anymore. Um, 
and and I get the last hit, and he falls and like withers away in the Dark Souls sort of way. And I just set the controller down, and I look at, uh, at the ground. I just I don't deserve this win. <laughs> I I did not get good. This was ugly. It just oh my god. And I, after that, I saved. I went to bed, and I didn't play for for the the next two days, just because yeah. it was. It's exhausting. Bosses in Dark Souls, you know, like you complete a level or something and, and you're all happy. No, in Dark mm-hmm. Souls, you're just you're, you're just Ex- done. exhausted. You're just yes. <laughs> mentally you're just over with. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. But uh, my, that's that's all that my gaming week had. So I have to, my favorite boss in Dark, Dark Souls is the one that you just run past in the beginning. So I have to get in here real quick and call out something that was said in chat because I agree mm-hmm. through all of that Dark Souls rant. The only thing I keyed in on is you said Total Annihilation, and that is a fantastic <laughs> game. Yes, it is. Of course. Yes, it is. Thank you, Dobby, for you, the call out would. there. You would. So, Adam, I'm going to yes. let you go first. You have some good stuff to talk about here. Yes, I'm a couple, excited. Yeah, a couple of good things to talk about. We'll get the Rocket League talk out of the way, because we have to every week. Um, but we've been playing Rocket League to prepare for the RLCS, which starts tomorrow. So open qualifiers. I think there's like 3,200 teams that signed up for this thing. Jesus. Nice. So week one of the open qualifiers is tomorrow. Hopefully we make week two. That would be pretty sweet. And um, you and your team, well, you will be streaming on the 72 mm-hmm. page during this, correct? I will be. Ooh. I will be streaming tomorrow. Um, so it wait, actually wait, starts... Where? Hmm? Where can people tune in to find that stream? Oh, yeah. Right here where you're already tuned in. That's twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector. Okay, I'll make um, sure to write that down. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So it starts at 3 p.m. EST. We'll be playing before that. I'll be streaming before that. Um, I'll probably start at like noon, something like that. Definitely get some prep in for that. So looking forward to that. But Rocket League is, you know, old news every week. So but I did play new a news? new game. I finally gave in and I bought Resident Evil 7. How the fuck is it? I'm only one I'm only one hour in. So from what I understand, uh after an hour or two, the game kind of changes gameplay styles. Because the first hour is more set up. There's some scripted uh enemy encounters. You get your first weapon. You know, that yeah. sort of thing. But I'm I'm liking it a lot so far. How many doors have you been afraid to open so far? Um The answer? All of them. All of them, no. Um a couple. Uh, m- most of the beginning of the game is uh you, you get into the house and you kind of explore around, you have your first couple of enemy encounters. Um it's really gory in the beginning. And that's great. It's very pretty. Hold on. It's gory and it's pretty. Pretty. As far as are you fidel- sick or fidelity. is there something that's I'm weird. missing no, here? Fidelity. Fidelity. <laughs> okay. Pretty. Not. No, no. Um, I really like what they've done with the uh, like the camera effects, like the field of view. Um, like what, what it isn't focused on, you have a lot of blurring, like artistic sort of blurring. So it oh. looks very. I don't want to say cinematic because that's not really the right word, but it does. It feels like a horror movie. It was more like it was shot from a camera rather than made from a video game. The way they do the focusing. Now, does it, does it put you in the mindset that you're just some douchebag with a camera? You're not like a high powered super soldier with a machine gun. Correct. Okay. Um, But, but from what I understand, you do get weapons. And I, well, you obviously get weapons. It's a Resident Evil game. I hope you get weapons. So, so they, did, they didn't go too far into the, uh, the Outlast Amnesia style uh, run of the mill, I guess, modern survival horror. Um, the field I'm, I'm, I'm really liking it so far. It's, it's cool. I'm excited to keep playing. Yeah, I know whenever I play through the demo, I mean, just uh, the demo you can play through in like a half hour. And mm-hmm. you, there's only one or two doors in that. And there's so much anxiety yeah. walking up yeah. to that door. Yeah. And that's I, that's actually, I pardon. didn't expect it because I thought when I, when they did that demo, there's like, this isn't part of the actual game. Like yeah. it's a separate thing, but that house oh, is actually cool. the first, you actually go to that, that same part of the house though. Nice. Hmm. 
and very different things happen there than what happened in the demo. Yeah, that's the way, nice. The way I understood the demo was here's an introduction to how the systems in the game are going to be. Mm -hmm. More or less, yes. Yeah, I was hmm. actually listening to uh, Giant Bomb, and they had a guy who did play through the entire thing in VR. So this is the first time I'm not just oh, hearing, nice. oh, it's good. He's explaining yeah. that with the whole anxiety walking up to doors and stuff in corners, that since you're in VR, he is actually sticking his head around and peeping yeah. physically around corners. Fuck. <laughs> and the, yeah, so that game, Jesus I will Christ. end up getting it when it's on sale. Yeah. But I'm not a big horror fan, so that's why I didn't jump on the full price wagon. Yeah, I can um, definitely see that. I also hear that Amazon has got a nice bundle package. If you buy the PS4 Pro, PlayStation VR, Resident Evil 7, uh, bundled with that is a six-pack of rubber underwear, uh, which is a requirement for playing this game in VR. <laughs> also, the, the, the candle. The official oh. Resident Evil 7 oh, yes. blood, sweat, and fears <laughs> candle. I can't believe that was a thing. I wonder I how many of those, I I wonder really how many of those they actually sold. You know people bought it just to keep on a bookshelf with nerdy shit like I have over my shoulder well, right yeah. there. Like, like the GameCube chainsaw controller for Resident Evil 4. What, what if there's some guy out there that bought that and they're like, I want my house to smell like musty old wood and blood all the time. <laughs> and he just lights it like a normal candle just day to day, not even playing the game. <laughs> and he's the same he has guy people that over for dinner. He puts them in the middle of the table. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He, that's the guy who takes mud and smears on the inside of yeah. his window so it dries and just looks like it's all old right. and decrepit. <laughs> uh, oh, so, uh, yeah. so, Irk, what have you been playing? I imagine probably not a whole lot, seeing as your gaming week wasn't exciting in the least. No, yeah, my, you didn't my, my, my get anything new or no, nothing experience like any new things? Nothing new. I just played a lot of Rocket League. Yeah. No, no, I'm joking. Um, so... I, on Tuesday, received my copy of Horizon Zero Dawn for PS4. Nice. Have, How is that? It is very, very good. I have put probably about six, seven hours in it. I streamed the first two or three. Mm -hmm. um, I did a little bit off the stream, and then I jumped back on. But this game's really... If you're going to play this game or watch the game... At the, the two to three hour mark, I think, is when it opens up and when you really get into the stride of it. So it's going to start. It's really slow. Actually, let me give a backdrop real quick. Those who don't know, Horizon Zero Dawn. It's a uh, post-apocalyptic kind of game where society has collapsed. There's all these fucking robots everywhere. Uh, you don't know shit about what's going on. And you're playing as this uh, woman who and the humans are set up in tribes that's kind of reverted back to tribal things mm -hmm. but the game in the first hour is kind of a tutorial some basic systems um it does a kind of a neat transition into a couple years ahead where it gives you a tutorial of after the first hour it gives a tutorial of like more of a quest structure it's not a typical fle or fetch quest because it involves a couple more systems, but mm -hmm. it's still kind of like, go here, help this lady out. She needs a few things, and then come find me. Um, you do that. There is a huge thing I'm not going to say anything about, but it gets pretty intense. Um, it's the first time they're kind of hands off. Hey, this is all you do it. Mm -hmm. And then after that, the game, there's one big boss fight, and the game opens up. So about two and a half, three nice. hour mark you hit the open world. And this so, world is huge. So I'm assuming then the, the play time, average playtime for the game is going to be pretty high if it only just opens up with after the first couple of hours. Yes. Um, I've heard, I mean, technically you could venture off after an hour, hour one, but mm -hmm. there's not a whole lot you can do because you don't have much yourself yet. Right. But well, I, I do have a, a question about that. So is is the like first three hours, is that all front loaded tutorial? I, is it just like slow plotting, hey, here's how you aim a bow, hey, here's how you not get eaten by the monster robot T Rex? Um or, the first or is hour it, is it more world building? Uh the first hour oh it's it mixes in the world building with it. It's not just de okay. or, uh, tutorial. But it is you definitely know it's hey, we're trying to walk you through this. Without mm -hmm. shoving it down your throat. 
Okay, right. that's good. That's so good. They're, they're showing you the systems while they're explaining why some of the things are the way they are in the world. Some of them. I always hated in, in most modern adventure games or, or most modern RPGs, it's, you know, front load the first 10 hours of tutorial content and treat you like a child for that time, and then we'll open up the game. <laughs> um, honestly, if you want to die, you can die right away. Oh, that's after good. After the initial, like, 15-minute tutorial, the very next thing you do, you could die if you do it wrong. Hmm. Granted, you have to try to do the next thing wrong. Because <laughs> there's, a, there's a stealth mechanism in this game where you can hide from mm. stuff in tall grass. Um, oh, okay. And you're hiding in this tall grass while these um, essentially security drones are walking by. Mm-hmm. And are those the flashlight raptors? Yes. Okay. They're called watchers. But yeah, they, um, they are very much observers. They are looking for people. Are they so, clever girls? They're not clever girls, thank God. Okay. But they do, they do some really interesting attacks, like jumping and spinning their tail around, which is kind of cool. I caught one in slow-mo. I put on the review that's up on our YouTube page. It's really cool. But they, um, they walk by, and they show you how to dodge them. If you walk out from the grass, you'll get caught. But there's so much grass, you have to intentionally do it. Hmm. All right. But then after all that tutorial, when the world opens up, it's huge. This world is fucking huge. Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of how they touted Zelda in this, where you see something in the distance, you can go get it. You nice. can just run That's out there cool. and go to it. Is there a pretty um, big variety of uh, like the styles of areas, like a snowy part and uh, different biomes and stuff? There is different biomes. I have came across snow, regular forest, um, like storms will roll in. Hmm. And the biggest effect of that is like a fog will come into the area. Which is kind of cool. You have day night cycles. So that's something nice. that you don't, I don't want to say you have to pay attention to, but it is something mm-hmm. that happens. Um, something I thought was interesting. You have some diversity in different types of robots. I think I've came across like seven different types so far. Yeah. But there is also wildlife, actual fox, oh, rabbits, cool. turkeys, pigs, hogs. Hmm. And they have is a there purpose. a hunting mini game? There are some mission, or the opening mission is a hunting thing, but you can harvest them to get things to um, make healing potions with. So hmm. it's kind of useful. Um, Essence of Fox. Well, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Wow, the, very I'm of, now. the very beginning of the game, he gives you a medicine pouch where he shows mm. you, hey, you harvest these random things, throw it in here, and you heal yourself later. So essentially, you get this pouch where you just throw random shit in, and then when you're hurt, you just take fistfuls of it out and eat it, and it heals mm. you somehow. <laughs> you stuff a fox in there, a pig, some twigs, a couple a rocks. S- Assorted oh. entrails, it's what's for dinner. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rocks, that really makes me feel better. All these bullet wounds are miraculously gone. <laughs> Maybe maybe it's that while you're eating like fox entrails, you actually don't give a shit about being shot anymore. You're just like, oh god, what have I done? This is horrible. Wow, I completely <laughs> forgot about my bullet wounds. That actually works. <laughs> so, um, something I thought was kind of cool. This game has a currency to save, but it's post apoc, so there's no real currency. You get mm-hmm. metal shards off the robots you kill, oh. and vendors want those, but. They don't just yeah. want those. Sometimes they want specific parts off of specific types of enemies for items. That's oh, cool. Cool. So it's kind, I kind of, of a, I like that. That's neat. It's a dual currency kind of thing. And that they mm. introduce that to you the very first vendor you go to. They force you to do that. So you understand nice. it's not just shards, it's also yeah. these specialized parts. That's cool. I like that. So you have items that is strictly for crafting, with that could be sold for cheap. Items mm-hmm. that are strictly for selling that you get shards out of. And then items that yep. you can sell, you can craft, or it may be a desire by a vendor. Okay. So, so, um, so I'm assuming there's like side quests to get specific items to get no. to trade to the vendors? No. You, you, you hunt down the robots and you get the drops. Okay. So every time you kill a robot, it, you can get different stuff. Um, mm-hmm. a, a different like shards and little pieces and parts. So that's how that whole drop mechanic or mechanism works. It's not loot in the sense of weapons. It's loot in the mm-hmm. sense of currency items. Okay. Um, 
It's interesting combat style. It's very, very heavy on the range with multiple mm-hmm. arrow types and bow types. Really quick to change. They give you, do you remember Red Dead Redemption? You had the, uh, I can't remember the mode, the Red Dead mode or something where you hit in the thumbstick and it goes slow-mo. Oh, yeah. Three headshots mm-hmm. and stuff. This yeah. game has that kind of mechanism where it slows oh, it down cool. so you can get some shots. Mm-hmm. Because in this game, if they get on you, it can get rough. Nice. Your melee can hit really hard and knock them down, but it's not going to serve you well if you've got five, six things on you. Okay. So um, that tends to be how you fight, but you also have traps. You can. My only trap I use so far is I have this tripwire that's electronic. When robots hit it, they stop. So you hmm. can see the path the robot's going to walk because all AI is scripted in areas until mm-hmm. they see you and then the DV, it goes off. Mm-hmm. So you can put that where you know they're going to be and then try to ambush them when they hit that point. Okay, cool. It's kind of interesting. And I definitely like the, the idea of more strategic combat instead of just, you know, yeah. sit off at a distance and fire arrows repeatedly. Like, you actually have to yeah. think about what you're doing. I was worried about this game when I when I first saw the trailer. I mean, other than it mm-hmm. looking absolutely beautiful, I thought, ah, sort of reliance on stealth ranged gameplay. Is this going to turn into yeah. a hide in a bush, poke out, <laughs> run yeah. to another bush, hide in the bush, poke <laughs> out, <laughs> You won't be able to do enough damage like that so far. Okay. And also some of these enemy types I've ran into, about two or three of them, that if you just run up and fight, yeah, you got them no problem, as long as it's not a big group. Mm-hmm. There's three different types I can think of right now that if you go up to without planning it out, you die. Hmm. Ooh. So cool. it's, it's kind of cool. Um, so it is a big open world game. So with all open world games, there are issues. Um, frame rate, not one of them. This game is beautiful and it runs great. Nice. However, I have found myself being able, so jumping mechanism looks kind of like PS2 th- or PS3 air, I guess you can say, where jumping looks awkward. Hmm. Early on, I noticed I could exploit that to climb rocks that aren't designed to be climbable. Mm. So the like old kind of, Skyrim kind of, yep. 90 degree vert- vertical horse riding up the mountain <laughs> yeah similar to that where you get to a corner that has different stuff and you can kind of mm-hmm. get your way up because they mark in yellow where you can actually climb so they kind of oh, baby okay. you with that right? so you can just kind of bullshit your way through it Yeah, we don't need no yellow here we're going to exactly. exploit the shit out of this we're real <laughs> men we break systems <laughs> I can see this being used for speedrunning. I can't wait till they uh, yeah. they start running this game. A speedrun of this game would take forty hours, maybe thirty hours. No, wow. no. You you climb over a rock, you hit a load zone. I mean, even Halo Two on Legendary took like an hour and twenty minutes. Yeah, but Halo Two only takes eight hours if you run normal. Yeah, I I could see them beating this in two hours. We'll see. We'll see. Next yeah. HEDQ, we're gonna see how long this takes. But there's one other bad thing. Um, so I was getting pinned and I was desperate. So I was trying to jump onto something and I managed to actually jump through a wall. Oh, it, it's a wall you good. could, it's a wall you could see through and it had like bars and stuff, but I was mm-hmm. able to get my way through it. And looking at it, you clearly know you should not be able to get through this. Ooh. And huh. it didn't get me to any area. I shouldn't have been. I literally could have walked around, but because of the mm-hmm. enemies, I wasn't able to. Huh? So, so far, that is the only really bad things I've seen. Um, It's beautiful. It runs well. It's very fun. Um, I'm only, like I said, what I say, like seven hours or something like that in. So, it hasn't been repetitive. The world's beautiful. I keep saying that because I I can't stress that enough. Holy shit. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So far, I think it's a fantastic game. We'll see at about hour 20 if it starts to get repetitive. Yeah, but still, though, for a sixty dollars game, I always use the the movie comparison. You know, I could go see an hour and a half movie for what ten, twelve dollars, or like you said, you're already seven hours in. You've already experienced a beautiful world, a variety of gameplay. You're not getting bored for sixty bucks. Yeah, you know, the, the time time to money ratio is already good, and you're just getting started. And or we, we could we could take the rabbit hole deeper, right? You could mm-hmm. buy you could go to half price books and spend three yeah. bucks on a book that'll take you sixty hours to get through. Well, yeah, 
But that's reading. Who does that? I game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but also for you guys who like story, I am not a big story guy. I've said that many times on here. I'm a systems mm-hmm. gameplay guy. Mm-hmm. But the story on this is really good so far. There's a lot of mystery to it. Um, they leave it really open. I'm really kind of excited to see where they take it. Cool. Because there's an interesting balance of we're knocked into Stone Age. We don't use technology, but there's certain groups and people that kind of use technology. Hmm. So you're kind of wondering where this is going to build to. Nice. So all in all, I think it's great so far. If you have a PlayStation, by all means, you should go get this game. If you don't, by the time next week rolls around, I might be telling you to go buy a PlayStation. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) And uh, you have a review of what on youtube of this yes i have a super high level introduction to uh, horizon zero dawn on our youtube it was posted yesterday um honestly probably within a week or two i'll do more in depth actually showing off the systems it -hmm. would be probably more of a 10 15 minute video not designed for people who are not interested in the game this is the i'm really thinking about getting the game i really want to see what's under the hood That'll be nice. And we will let you know here on the 72 Pin Connector podcast and on our Twitter feed when we have that for you. It'll be good. Plugged. Keep an eye out. Plugged. All right. So, so I, I was excited to hear about Horizon Zero Dawn, but I'm more excited to hear about this specific piece of hardware you purchased, Eric. Yes. The Nintendo GameCube. So any other, any other year, having a game like Horizon Zero Dawn coming out in February, the, in March time would have ran until May. I mean, just the hype yeah. train off of that. But just three days later, well, actually technically four, the new piece of Nintendo hardware is released. The Nintendo Switch. Wow, that was perfect timing. But <laughs> I just purchased that this morning, 6 a.m. So... At 6 a.m., I drove to a Walmart because my Walmart wasn't open at midnight. And I grabbed this magnificent little black tablet of amazingness. <laughs> um, I have the unboxing video already up on our YouTube, but screw that. If you're listening right now, I'll give you all the details. Um, it's built fairly well. Um, it's very sleek, looks sharp as hell. Um, the Joy-Cons feel good in your hand. They do. They feel really good in your hand. They're small, but they fit. If there's anything Nintendo is good at and has always been good at, it's controller mm-hmm. design. Right. Yeah, and I was worried about that because they looked really small. They, they are. Did. They are literally the size of my middle finger in length. Wow. Wow. That said, got big hands, I, I have though, a big you? hand. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do this in like kind of two ways. I'm going to start with the bad. Okay. So I want to get this out of the way because I don't want this to have a negative tone to it. So I just want to throw it out there. Um, the rail system on the controllers, um, they give you a strap that enhances the bumpers on the controller. When you play it in the single joy con form, um, position, Mm -hmm. the, the rail goes on there and gives you a rich strap snaps on slides on beautifully. Well, the very first time I put it on, I didn't realize that there's a symbol to show you which side needs to go, which way it's universal. Mm. But if you put it on backwards, it only it's one ways for the left, one ways for the right. Mm -hmm. I did it backwards. I didn't realize it. It was still even functional. So it still functioned, which was amazing, but it didn't fit quite right. Hmm. Okay. But here's the bad news. This thing is a pain in the ass to take off. Even when I put (laughs) it on right, when I took this thing off, it took so much pressure. I threw the joy con at the ground. Oh my God. Jesus. It took bad. Yeah. This is like, if you're doing this towards the TV, you can have a weep tarred moment without really being too dumb. Oh, damn. Oh, that's an issue. (laughs) Yeah. So um, I've heard other people talk about it and I'm just thinking, you Mm -hmm. know, they're wrong angles. Maybe they just have a burr or something. No, it's Mm -hmm. it's legitimate issue. Oh, wow. Um, I thought it was. That's what you get, though, for playing with one of the Joy-Cons by itself. Come on. Okay, we'll get there. (laughs) We will get there. I'm telling you, I want to get on that. All right. Keep um, going. So that, that was a bad, uh, the kickstand, you know, they advertise this thing is the, mm-hmm. you put in front and you kick it out and you just play it. It works. The kickstand pops out, holds up the game, works fantastic. 
That kickstand is the flimsiest thing I've ever held in my hand. I thought I was going to break it off when I opened it up. <laughs> oh, wow. Man, I that's was really good. shocked because Nintendo is normally not a company that does that. But the, right. that felt really flimsy. That's so what's your estimated survival time of your kickstand? If you have a seven-year-old playing this, your kickstand might last you a month. Jesus. Yeah. That's not good for a Nintendo console. That's mm-hmm. terrible for Nintendo yeah. console. Keep in mind, yeah. I put just, my Game Boy Advance through a washing machine when I was a kid, and that thing came out perfect. <laughs> That's just the kickstand, though. Just keep that in mind. Yeah. That's just one little itty bitty sliver. I mean, really, really, really thin sliver you of plastic. To put, you have to put the <laughs> really switch in the washing machine. Practice. We're never going to know unless you do a washing machine switch video. Yeah, but they have Coming cases, up next right? Week. You can you can buy an aftermarket case that has a probably a lot better kickstand on the back of it, right? I don't know if they'll have aftermarket cases because it won't fit I in hope the dock. They will. Oh, any it, any handheld, even if it's not Nintendo no, branded, somebody will do it. It won't fit in the dock, and you can't have anything on the sides oh, yeah. because you have something on the sides. You can't get to the Joy Cons. The well, way it, the mm-hmm. way this thing is shaped, you would have to put it on and off every time you take it out of the dock. And yeah. you would have to consciously know if you're using the Joy-Cons or not to which kind of car- hey. case you're using. That said, hmm. that said, I think that's all the negative I really have to say. Well, actually, yeah. no. One more thing. They have Z buttons and they have bumpers on each one. The bumpers mm-hmm. feel blatantly plastic, the top bumper. That said, mm-hmm. it still feels okay. The so trigger. does it... Does it feel like a like a wee nunchuck kind of plasticky feeling? Um, no. Um, I th- I think like think of the Z button on the old Game Cubes. Okay. Only maybe yeah, maybe about that feel. Only a thinner and a smaller amount of pole needed. It's a really close actuation point. Okay. Um, hmm. now the triggers on these things feel very plasticky, very cheap, uh, very hmm. close actuation points. Whenever I heard that there was, it was all digital, no analog pull on the trigger, I didn't see an issue in it. But now I actually mm-hmm. get my hand on it, I kind of wish it was analog. Yeah. That's a weird issue to have because everyone has gone to analog triggers now. Yes. Right. So I do want to throw this out there. Actually, I'll throw this in the negative right now because there's only one more negative thing I have. Nintendo, notoriously bad at distribution, has changed it up on this launch. Keep in mind, I went at 6 a.m. day of launch. Six hours after this thing came out, I was Mm -hmm. at a Walmart. They had switches that if you didn't have pre-ordered, you could still buy of both types. That's impressive. That's cool. I went to another Walmart. They still had it even after that. I went to a GameStop at 11 a.m. and they had them still. Wow. They gave a supply. The GameStop still had them? Yes. They gave these suckers out. They did great at making sure if you wanted that console, it may be one store was sold out. There is some place close to you that still had them. Yeah. It's not too late, everybody. You can still go buy one. Do we know if this was uh, just Nintendo actually doing the right thing and stocking appropriately? Or do you get the feeling that people are just like, I pre-ordered this. I'm just not going to pick it up, though, because I put down mm-hmm. five bucks and who cares? No, no, no. Pre-orders are held for two days. They are not allowed to sell a pre-order for two days. Oh, so these are just like unmarked. Totally yes. free for everyone, not just I haven't picked it up yet consoles. Nintendo wow. finally got their head around distribution on consoles. Now, hold on. So, wait, if you meet demand with the amount of supply you have, the equation balances out and you make money? Huh. Well, hmm. uh, we're not Someone done. should make like an economics class based around this weird supply demand thing. You see, <laughs> you should, and you should still give it to Nintendo because they still got the total thing wrong. <laughs> they did right here. So, you know, I pre-ordered the console. That's all I did. I went to the store. They had Zelda. Actually, they had the Zelda Special Edition, which I'll break down here in a minute. Mm-hmm. But they also had Just Dance In, and they also had, um, I can't remember the other game, 1-2 Switch. By the way, don't buy yeah. that at stock price. No fucking way. But <laughs> they did not have Joy-Con- or the Pro Controllers at Walmart. Walmart did not get any Pro Controllers in. I wanted a Pro Controller. Mm. I had to go to a GameStop. GameStop was sold out of them. GameStop was sold out of, well, I took the last charge uh, controller pad. All the accessories were under distributed. You could not buy a secondary controller. They were gone. So they met it and did perfect with the console distribution. 
they did not get the accessories out there. And we're not talking weird ass cases. We're talking legitimate controllers. Right. Because so I want no, the pro. No pro controllers. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. If anything, I would have expected that to be more in supply than the actual consoles. That's your typical thing. Normally, the yeah. order of uh, rarity goes console, games, accessories. And games were there and consoles were there. Accessories were what mm-hmm. was missing. Mm. So did you, I, I know you didn't you know, walk in, in the back and count every single cartridge, but what games looked like they sold well and what games looked like they were kind of the underperformers? I couldn't tell you. Okay. I couldn't tell you at all because there was a stack of Zelda. I mean, <laughs> we were talking yeah. eight games at the Walmart I was at easily. Um, but I'm telling you, I'm reading what's going on in chat and the talk of um, lack of uh, demand. This is in demand. There were lines still when I went to GameStop. People were going out of Walmart with consoles. This thing is in demand. They just met that demand for the consoles. And I think a glaring thing is the fact that they don't have the accessories is to prove that they had more demand than what they might have even thought. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Either that or Nintendo did the, the standard thing like they did with the, the Wii U GameCube adapter thing where they made like three of them for the United States launch. They said, hey guys, uh, we made a thing, you should go buy it now. And no one had it. Yeah. yeah they they so- probably had one pro controller per store or something absolutely yeah. Nintendo style ridiculous. Um, I, we'll, we'll see the stats when it comes out, but I want to know what it was because it felt weird. But yeah. That is all bad stuff I have to say about the console itself. Um, the buttons press fantastic. The uh, joysticks feel great. The rail system I harped on earlier, mm-hmm. these things slide right in and out of the Joy-Con grip. These things slide right on and off of the tablet without an issue. I've went up to that tablet, slammed these things down, and picked the tablet up just like they show in the display. Slammed them down. Well, yeah, I slammed them. That sounds aggressive. But, I mean, <laughs> I put it right in, pulled the console right out, was beautifully, nice. just smooth as butter. The game paused for a second and said, hey, you're going to handheld configuration, uh, confirm that you're ready to go, and boom, you're going. Oh, Jeez. so there's a confirmation. It's not like, oh, I'm about to die, I'm going to pull my console out real quick, oh shit, he hit me and now I'm dead because I wasn't ready. Yeah, it So stopped. It, it pauses everything. Yeah, it stopped nice. the game. Um, That's good. And I wanted to put this through the test. So Gina was playing Zelda, pulls it out. We go to the truck. We drive to GameStop. She's playing the entire time. Disconnected from the Wi-Fi, oh, everything perfectly. Oh, I want this so bad. <laughs> that selling point I'm was not, to not buy a this. They nailed it. It was smooth. It was flawless. It is great. Nice. I'm uh, trying to think I, think, what... I think we've got our ending for the podcast there. Right there. Th- thank you again. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> I I want to stress that this console feels good. It it feels like it's really well polished, well designed. Not a whole lot feels cheap. Just the kickstands and the trigger. So only real mm. cheap feeling to it. So one bad thing is the game selection. You have three physical games to choose from right now. If you want physical, you have Zelda, which everyone wants. You have Just Dance, that maybe I don't know who wants. And you have Bomberman R. I ended up picking, and the nice thing is Bomberman R is only like a $40 title. So they're not oh, charging not 60 true. for it. Yeah. When I saw that price point, I went ahead and picked up Bomberman R and actually yeah. launch day picked up Zelda Special Edition. Didn't pre-order it, just picked it up. Hmm. Oh, wow. nice. And I want to get into that first. We'll get into the other stuff yeah. later. Um, this Special Edition came with a case, the Sheik, uh, the Sheikah case for the, D, mm-hmm. or the Switch to go in. So the Switch goes in it. This thing has an accessory pouch on the top of it. Perfect spot to be putting power banks. You could fit you nice. probably a power bank that will last you 20 hours in that thing. Oh, that's Ooh. nice. And this is a nice, heavy case. It has a good Velcro system to hold the Switch in. It has a tray for uh, 12 cartridges. It's wow. fantastic. There, does, it have, does it have a fastener to attach a big magnifying glass to to see the screen bigger with a flashlight on it <laughs> no if so, it doesn't have that then i'm not buying it also yeah. i need some of the flip out speakers yeah. that i can plug into the the headphone jack 
Yeah. So I will say the sound quality in handheld mode is fine. Visibility yep. is great on handheld mode. If, you, if you're holding it at full arm's length out, you have no issues still. I have bad eyes nice. and I can do that without issues. Bad eyes and long arms. One thing I do want to mention about power bricks, and this might be kind of educational for, for people listening to the podcast, um, is the vast majority of people who are using the Switch with USB-C power bricks are noticing that the system drains faster than it can charge. And that's because the vast majority of power bricks out there don't have the umph necessary to charge the Switch fast enough. It's not an issue with the Switch itself, it's the issue with the cheap power bank you bought. And I think there's like one or two out there that'll actually work properly with the Switch that are fast enough to charge this thing while it's running. Uh, mm -hmm. But just keep that in mind. Look at the numbers, look at what the switch requires, look at what your power bank will output, read some reviews. I'm sure that we'll have, you know, switch ready power banks uh, yeah. here in the next couple of months. But right now, I would hold off on buying one for the moment yeah. because most of them are incompatible. The drain is real. Just so you know, that talk of Zelda being two and a half hours of battery life, that's it. That's mm -hmm. not them blowing smoke to get the worst numbers out there. We, that's she nice. played for like 30 minutes, I think it was. And it was over 10% drain. And mm. I, I don't know the exact number, but it's somewhere in that. So, I mean, that, that sucker right. drains. But that's an intensive game, too. Yes, I'm sure there's gonna, going to be many more games that aren't that intensive. That's, that's one of the things that really hit the 3DS on launch pretty hard, too, was the mm -hmm. you know, relatively shitty battery life compared to the original DS uh, or even the DS Lite. I would, I'm almost wanting to wait till Rev 2 of the Switch hardware. Mm -hmm. they're going to have better stuff, more compatibility, better cases, better battery life, because you know what's going to happen, right? They re-released the 3DS like eight times already. It's, it's a Nintendo console. They're going to have a bazillion different colors. They're going to have a bazillion different configurations, and each version is going to be better than the last one. If I'm waiting anyway, I might as well wait till Gen 2. Also, um, I'm going to get a price cut. I think you'll still be okay, though. In Honestly, here's what it comes down to. If you plan on being a Switch mobile gamer and actually do this on the go, you need a case. Make sure this case has room for a good power bank and you'll be okay. Because even if the power bank is not filling as fast as you're going, you will get five, six hours of play. And I can't think of many situations where you will yeah. do that much straight in a mobile situation. On the right, couch, yeah, Unless you're I gotcha. on an airplane to Europe. Well, and then on airplanes, You're you typically fine. have charging ability on airplanes in that yeah. long yeah. flight. Yeah, airplanes aren't, aren't too bad anymore because so. you've got plugs everywhere. I'm starting to fly more than I used to. I love that. They all have USB ports. It's oh, fantastic. It's, <laughs> don't, don't, please, please. You're hurting the while. security guy. I mean, buy a fucking USB condom or, or use the... USB the, condom. It, seriously, it, it cuts off the data jacks. It doesn't have the data jacks in it. It just passes mm -hmm. through power. So yeah. instead of the airplane sucking off all the data on your phone, which isn't the problem with newer versions of Android or iPhones, but mm -hmm. uh, instead of that happening, you just get the charging ability. So USB or, condoms are on Amazon. They're cheap and they will protect you. So or I just use my 3DS so I'm not worried. But or um, that <laughs> so back to um zelda on this one funny ass thing i'll have it up tomorrow i'm doing the unboxing of that on the youtube tomorrow you'll see all that these cases are pretty big they're about two-thirds to three-fourths the size of a standard xbox one case the game is the size of my thumb this game will really? take up like like sd card size it's smaller than a standard SD card. Damn. Oh. And I mean, we're taking, it's taking up less than 5% of the real estate in this case. So you open huh. this case up, there's no manual, there's just a little bit of art, and then there's this itty bitty thing in the corner. It huh. is hilarious. So, okay, but the real question is, how did it taste? Yeah, okay. have you tasted that yet? So, and, and if you haven't, you need to do this on you camera. Haven't, let's do a live tasting right now. So, yes, we need to do this right now. I've done the debating. <laughs> this is I cannot do it right yeah. now because the only game in front of me is Zelda. I'm not allowed to taste test Zelda. Oh, um, I have on. Bomberman R, and I promise you yeah. on camera, I will have a taste test of Bomberman R. Okay. I How promise. are you going to okay. prepare it? Have you decided? Um, I yeah, think are you going to have like a, a bolognese sauce? Are you going to have it grilled? I think I'm going to take it straight, but have a nice um, wheat beer on the side. Okay. I've heard that's a pretty oh, good nice. compliment. Yeah. Any garnish? Um, maybe some ketchup with some like basil. 
Hmm. Well, it's an interesting we'll choice. But anyway, so to the back to the legit stuff. Um, Zelda. It runs at 900. The Switch does. Resolution. Mm-hmm. You see some frame drops in Zelda on 900. You actually do. Like, very early within the first five minutes, I was watching this. I'm like, that just dropped. That just happened. And it happened mm-hmm. long enough for me to acknowledge it and still see it after I acknowledged it. Oh. Um, how, how low of a frame rate are we talking? We're talking five to ten frames. So it's not terrible, s- but it's definitely noticeable. A drop of- a drop of five to ten yes, frames. Yes, not two five okay. to ten frames. <laughs> okay. yeah, 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 you yeah, yeah, yeah. scared the shit out of me. <laughs> five to little... ten frames. That's really good. That's, it's that's l- too low. That's it's really like you're low. watching a movie from the 1930s. Yeah. Yeah, so... <laughs> sorry, I just saw a uh, chat comment. Uh, Walmart check. They had them, but one had negative five because their math is fantastic. Why does that not surprise me from Walmart? <laughs> negative five in stock. Um, but you you go there with a switch, it vanishes. It's like, oh fuck, what the hell? It's gone. <laughs> so when you put Zelda in handheld mode, anti switch matter. You do not see the performance drop at all. There's no frame drops in handheld mode. Which oh, yeah, this is the pretty thing me. about this because you drop to 720 res when you go to the con- or the handheld, so it takes yeah. less horsepower. Because that dock is not giving you any added horsepower. So you're yeah. actually getting the same amount of performance at a lower res, so it's going to run better in handheld. I think this is, is going to be a theme over the entire life of the Switch. Is there yeah. an option to set the docked Switch to 720p mode? If I valued frame rate over all else, could I say run this at a lower resolution on my bigger TV? I honestly have not checked that. From what I'm seeing on the Switch, it's pretty high level stuff. I doubt they give you that option. I okay. really don't see Nintendo letting you get under the hood like that. Yeah. I'm really concerned about this because as as we've seen with all consoles, right, the complexity in in the graphical prowess of games on a particular console trends upwards over time. And that usually goes with people figuring out how to use the the system's capabilities better. Um mm-hmm. But the the games are typically harder and harder to run as time goes on. They push the system to further and further limits. If a launch title is having this this kind of problem, what can we expect? You know, three years down the line, five years down the line, with a big heavy hitter game, right? If Zelda can't run at nine hundred p, is is Zelda Seven gonna run at? You know, 900p is mm-hmm. is you know Gears of War 96 gonna gonna even make it to this console because it seems pretty underpowered. So two things: a Gears of War is never gonna leave Microsoft because that's a Microsoft well, title. Right. But sorry, right. had to had to be that asshole. But um, I don't want to overstate this. It's not that. Oh my God, this happens a lot. It's just I noticed it once. I think twice, mm-hmm. maybe in total. But so it could just be a game specific issue. It doesn't necessarily have to be directly related to the Switch being shitty or anything. Oh, true. And I'm what I'm trying to stress is this game still runs great. It's just a couple times I realized, yeah, okay, those frames did drop. It's not Last Guardian type of dropping. This is just very occasionally you will notice a drop. So I mean that's fine. As far as the yeah. game itself, the game is very pretty. Um, it's Wind Waker esque, so this game is going to age great. Um, some, that's good. Something really fun. Uh, there's this whole waypoint system in here where you can drop waypoints, and you can have category waypoints where you can drop. Hey, there was a really cool chest here I couldn't get to, or here's where mm-hmm. some really cool items are. Um, interesting thing, you have this kind of spotting scope, and in the spotting mm-hmm. scope, you're able to drop waypoints. So if you see a chest off in the distance. You can look at it, drop a waypoint on it. Okay. And I was just having some fun, and I'm That's looking around. Cool. I'm like, oh, there's a mountain off in the distance. I'm going to try to drop a waypoint. I was able to drop it. And then I look at the map, and I'm like, nice. oh, it's right there. And then I realized, hold on, that isn't where it's at. And I zoomed out. That son of a bitch yeah. I tagged was on the opposite end of the map. Nice. That's cool. So there's some really cool stuff they're doing with this world. Um, so far, I haven't noticed any major glitches, which, okay, mm-hmm. I love Nintendo. Their stuff is always well-polished. 
a game of this magnitude, there is going to be some glitches. I, yeah, I'm going to yeah, be yeah, shocked yeah. if there's no glitch. And I don't mean Nintendo S- or Super Mario 64 type glitches. Those are breaks. But I mean like Bethesda type glitches. There's going to be a couple. Um, the game's great so far. It's fun. The only issue I have is this throwing of weapons mechanism. I've mm-hmm. accidentally thrown like five weapons. Three of them I've thrown <laughs> into the drink, so I couldn't get them back. Oh, no. And one of them was, I just got this <laughs> badass sword. Oh, I say badass. It's really shitty, but it's the best one I had. And I right. meant to pull up the scope. I hit the wrong button and I threw it into a pond before I ever got to use it. <laughs> so, so you know what this sounds like? This sounds like you should just get good. Yeah. You, you just, yeah, you got to get good. Okay. I'm not get very lit, deep fam. in this. I get don't lit. see the Dark yeah. Souls references yet. The endurance does not feel like it's a thing for fighting. The mm. endurance is actually kind of cool because if you're climbing, you can climb any rock face you want really in this game. But that if you're so cool, if you're climbing, it yeah. takes endurance. If you're sitting still, the endurance does not regenerate. So you can oh. end up in a situation where you're trying to climb this rock face. And then all of a sudden you realize mm. I don't have enough endurance for this. And it's not as simple as just turn around and come back down because that takes endurance too. Right. It turns oh. into, Oh fuck. What did I just do? So they, they <laughs> lifted this mechanic directly, like like carbon copy from Shadow of the Colossus. Oh, is, does Shadow of Colossus have that kind of oh, mechanism? Oh yeah, yeah, sort of. E- well, exactly, because it's got had- a degree. It's got a degree of regeneration, but the the maximum amount of regeneration will decrease over time yeah. as you use it. Yeah, but the the way in Shadow of the Colossus where you can you can climb a fucking anything. Or, or hold on to anything, and it decreases mm. your meter. Uh, it looks like the same thing. I was watching someone on Twitch play it very, very poorly, but uh, <laughs> but watching them play through it while I was screaming at the TV, telling them yeah. to get good. Yeah, I think this endurance is it's going to be a pain in the ass, and not in a bad way. It's not going to be this is ultra annoying. It's going to be you have to pay attention to it often. In other words, you're going to put mm-hmm. yourself in a terrible spot. Yeah. Which I kind of like. It's enjoyable like that. Yeah, I was, I was going to say it, it. it's not so much a nuisance to what you're trying to do more than just a, another game mechanic you have to stay on top of that it kind of increases the depth of gameplay. Yes. Um, I've been switching my weapons a lot, so I have only broken mm-hmm. one or two weapons so far. Um, mm-hmm. So I can't speak to that me- uh, mechanism too much. I've worn down a few, and it'll let you know. It'll strictly say, hey, this is getting worn out. So you know, oh crap, I need to make sure I got another weapon ready. Yeah. Um, man, there was something else I was going to say. I just, man, I just blanked. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can, you, can you get a sense of how big the, the map is, the world? Um, you can't get everything yet. But yes, from right. the very beginning, you were given this view. And Nintendo did this by pure plan. I mean, they knew what they wanted to yeah. do. You step out on this ledge and it's, oh, fuck, this is huge. This world is just gigantic. So it's, it's going to be a long game. I haven't gotten very from, far. It's been enjoyable, very enjoyable so far. But From what I've seen of the, of the stream that I watched, that map is fucking massive. From the reviews I've read, there are, there are people who said, yeah, you know, almost at the very beginning of the game, there's like a little training thing you have to go through, but after that, the whole map is basically open to you, except, you know, like, they'll say, hey, look, there's, there's Death Mountain over here, and you could totally walk there, but Death Mountain will light you on fire because it's really fucking hot, so you've got to find some <laughs> fire-resistant gear or potions or figure out another way to get there, and there, there have been people that, you know, run up Death Mountain with a shit ton full of food in their backpack and every time they're about to die they they cram some more food in and then just keep chugging through the mountain (laughs) hoping to reach a safe zone yeah it it sounds absolutely amazing i like that kind of that level of freedom i like that a lot yeah so so far (laughs) and i know this this kind of hits into our, our news a little bit but right now breath of the wild is the fourth highest rated game on metacritic of all time it has gotten numerous perfect scores. Uh, it is being praised everywhere as not only the greatest Zelda game ever created, um, or or one of the greatest Zelda games ever created, but one of the best games ever created, bar none. 
Uh, it's it's really the driving force between me, you know, for me trying to not buy a Switch. Like right. I'm, I am so <laughs> goddamn close, just running out right now and buying one. So I don't want fun. this yeah. to sound like a slight on Zelda yeah. because I think the game so far I haven't gotten very deep. It's good so far, but from what I've seen, I don't see how this is like the fourth best game ever. So far, granted, they could end up wowing yeah. me. So you have to keep in mind too, the game just came out. So those those ratings and numbers are going to be inflated for a little while until they settle down. It, that it is happens true. All That's the true. Time. That's true. Look at Adam being well measured in his response damn to Tom's you. hyperbole in my no. Oh. Damn you! <laughs> get hyped, damn it! Get hyped. No, no, I am. I I want to play this hype so bad. Harder and hype harder. <laughs> ah! No, <laughs> that's, um, that's a lot of hype. Okay, good. We've got some no, hype. I've never, I've never been a Nintendo guy at all. Like, I haven't owned a Nintendo console for since I was a little kid, pretty much. But this has actually got me excited. I want to play this game. There's one system in it I haven't been exposed to yet that I know I want to see because I'm. To me, this is going to be. If they nail this system, this game's going to be really good. If they didn't nail the system. The game's still going to be good, but they'll be a nuisance. The temperature system. Um, I've seen some mm. stuff where people are up in mountains and they're cold and they have to do certain things to stay warm. I'm just mm. concerned if they don't give you a mechanism to properly like make this not something where you have to cook every five minutes to give yourself food that gives you yeah. cold immunity every five minutes. So that's the only thing I'm worried about. I'm hoping that that's not there, but that's the only thing. But that's okay. all I have for Zelda. Do you guys have any other questions on that before I get to uh, some fun stuff? Um, Weapon degradation. Yes. Has it pissed you off yet? No. Okay. Um, I don't get attached too easily to stuff. So, mm -hmm. And the fact that I've thrown away so many weapons on accident, <laughs> degradation <laughs> hasn't been my biggest issue. My own dumbass self has been my biggest issue. Um, do, do the weapons feel really different? Like in Dark Souls, you know, the difference between a halberd and a sword and a spear are far apart. Like they, they will completely change how you enter a combat encounter. Do the weapons in Zelda feel different enough that you would say, okay, for this situation, I probably want more of an axe than I want a sword or a spear? Um, so far. I've, like I said, I haven't gotten super deep. Um, I've noticed that like clubs and swords, one-handed clubs and so one-handed swords are a lot quicker than like your two-handed axes. So, I mean, you have that generic part for sure. I've not gotten hands-on enough to realize, does this type of one-handed weapon have an advantage over this type or that type? So okay. I, I can't answer that yet. From what I've seen so far, it's not that granular. But we'll see. Uh, we, we do have a question from chat. Uh, any daggers, quick swords, dual wielding that you've seen yet? Um, I have not seen any dual wielding yet. Um, I have a sword and shield, typical Zelda fashion so far. Um, it's not that I don't think they can dual wield it. They actually have the system set up where they'd be able to do an offhand switch pretty easy. Mm -hmm. I just don't know if that's there. Um, one thing that was a little clunky is the um, I, the button to quick change bow types and arrow types, I mean, is the same button as switching weapon types, but you can only hmm. do it if that weapon type is out. So if you want to switch your melee weapon, melee weapons have to be out, then you hit the button. If you want to switch hmm. your bow type, you have to have your bow out and then hit that weapon. That's a lot. For, for the quick... Yeah, I thought it was a little weird for quick. So if you're up meleeing someone... Yeah. And you see someone off in the distance, and you want to get your bow ready while you're finishing off a combo, you can't unless it's already what's there. So it's not a huge thing. It's just a little quirky. Because yeah. I had a bow out and I was wanting to switch to a club. Um, so I shot, shot, shot. And while I was running up, I went to switch. But then I realized I was switching my arrows. And I'm like, what the fuck's happening? And then I realized I had to put away the bow, pull out my sword, and then switch to the club. That's that sounds hmm. annoying. It may end up being bit, okay yeah. once you get used to it, but it's definitely um, it's a little odd. I, and, and I, it's uh, not that I don't understand it. It's just it fell out of place. They had enough buttons on that controller to have one bound for range, one bound for right hand or for what melee. 
Well, I mean, from what it sounds like, they've got like six of those buttons mapped to throw your weapon into the lake. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, they <laughs> could have... to the nearest the nearest lake. Target nearest body of be. water. Chuck sword. <laughs> <Bro>. <laughs> Um, so Dobby's asking good questions. I just don't yeah. have enough time in the game. He's asking if enemies scale or if it's just from different areas. Oh, yeah. I, um, I was curious about that as well. So far, the I've came across these red dudes, and they have been the same everywhere I've found them so far. So mm-hmm. I think when you see... <clears throat> oh, wow. I just cleared my voice right on the throat. Um, that was inaudible. Sorry. They um, will <laughs> stay the same. When you see X, he will be the same difficulty everywhere. But you might see an okay. X with a different variant. That's uh-huh. kind of what I'm thinking so far. I could be wrong, but that's what I'm seeing okay. right now. Once again, very intro level. Um, I've just really completed the first temple area. So, okay. So, uh, a couple of things I saw on stream, because I, I did watch a, a good bit today. Um, uh chat chat is just wonderful right now yeah um, anyway. I, knew, I knew i was gonna get eight alive for that one <laughs> <laughs> so some of the things i've seen on stream and a lot of the reviews i've read uh point to nintendo creating a material system uh for all objects and environments in this game uh what that basically boils down to is every single item in the game has got certain properties like uh you know, uh, metallic or or wood or water or lightning or fire. Um, I saw uh, an enemy fire a laser at Link. He dodges it and it hits the side of this hill, this grassy hill, and the hill fucking catches fire. And the fire spread throughout the grass. I'm like, holy shit, what the fuck? This guy threw a bomb at a group of enemies in a forest and it hit a tree and it like burst into splinters and fell over. I was like, oh my god. Mm. It's amazing. Cool. He, he he takes off on his paraglider thing and, and takes off on the mountain, but it's a bad idea because it's in the middle of a goddamn thunderstorm. So he's now way up in the sky during a thunderstorm. He gets hit by lightning, falls to his death. It's amazing. Just the, the level of, of interactivity with the environment and the enemies and the items is something I haven't seen since Far Cry 2. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's... I hated Far Cry 2. I abhor Far Cry 2, but the the way the environments and the systems meshed and worked together was mm-hmm. absolutely amazing, and I haven't seen anything do that since. Cool. Um, so I'm far, really excited. Um, I have not seen this as being a crafting-heavy game. There is a cooking element, which will involve some crafting, but I have not mm-hmm. seen much of a crafting system. But. You can uh, you can cook fairies. I saw some guy. You you select a bunch of items from your inventory, like oh, some mushrooms and peppers and steaks and corn, and let's throw in a fairy in here because he accidentally clicked on the fairy. And he mm-hmm. fucking throws the fairy in a goddamn cooking pot. And <laughs> what happens is like all this stuff like like jumps up and it's cooking, and there's like a little tune that plays, and the fairy flies around him. Like oh my god, he's baking the fairy alive. <laughs> no, it's it's the fairy like blessing i guess your your meal yeah and the like pepper steak he got out of it was way super pepper steak yeah it was it was like a buffed pepper steak that gave him (laughs) way more stuff than it would have otherwise it's like huh this is kind of fucking rad yeah enriched with vitamin d the systems are going to be really cool um and like you said with the environment um very beginning i found a boulder I literally went up to Boulder. I'm like, I wonder if I can do this. And I pushed it. And I pushed it off this ledge, and it hit a hill. And this hill kind of bent. And all of a sudden, it started rolling down this hill. And it just kept going. Mm. And it's going faster and faster and faster. And it's not the kind of scripted N64 push a boulder. It's on a track. This was the exact angle I pushed it is how it landed, which is where it started to roll from. And it eventually fell off the ramps it was on and just fell straight down this Mm. canyon physics environmental interactions plus a real goddamn physics engine in a zelda game i don't think i could ever be more hyped for anything <laughs> i need to just not go out and buy it because i know if i buy, buy it, it it's, tom it's just never, buy it tom it's never gonna meet my expectations but oh my god i want to go out after the power this of link compels you oh, and as pro I, I need just this. threw I out need there this. everyone who's ever played ocarina of time is drooling at the idea that you can finally cook Navi. And yeah. shut her <laughs> up. 
<laughs> but it's just the pink fairies. If it was a white fairy, if you could find a white fairy and cook that bitch, oh, yo, you better be guaranteed. I'd be frying up some fairy wings. Good old, they've got a nice crisp to them. Add, add just a little bit of sauce just for some flavor. Don't want to add too much. Can't get those soggy. They fall apart, literally. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really all I got about on Zelda. Um, next week, I'll be able to come with a little more. But I did want to hit on some other stuff I got because it involved using the Joy-Cons in the two-player formation. So hmm. I'll start with Bomberman R. Um, Bomberman, it's a known quantity. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Bomberman, you get four. We did multiplayer and story. I'll talk story later, but multiplayer. Four players, each spawn in a corner. You're dropping bombs to clear the level to get to where you can drop bombs to kill people. Um, so mm-hmm. each Joy-Con functions as a fully functioning controller. I was skeptic about this the first time I saw it. I'm thinking, these controllers are so small. There's no yeah, way this is going to work. I thought the same. It worked great. For that kind of purpose mm-hmm. on that game, it felt really good. And Wait, but which which controller were you using? Were you using the the regular left side controller, or or were you were you kind enough to take the right side controller with the stupid analog stick directly in the right middle in of the, the plastic? Middle. So <laughs> it looks like both. the worst thing ever. I've mm-hmm. done both, and I will say yes. The right hand one feels a little weird at first, but the distance isn't that much because the controller is so small. It's not that far to go. The biggest issue with that is the bumpers on the top are really bad in this configuration. Mm. Even with that slide guard to enhance them, it's really bad. Um, But the single Joy-Con configuration is actually very serviceable. Um, We play Bomberman like that. And side note, Bomberman R, multiplayer, it's just like any other one. But the story mode, the maps are on an offset. So it feels really, really weird. Hmm. Um, you can't like if you go to turn up or left or right it's not as precise because it's at an angle and since you don't have a d-pad you hmm. can't get that precision you really want hmm. that's, so it's, that's kind of disappointing so yeah. with the pro controller I'm assuming that would get a lot better because of the d-pad hmm. but we'll, we'll see when that comes but also the other game I got and we were playing a decent amount of was snipper clips this snipper game clips. is super what fun. What the hell is what snipper, is snipper clips? clips? So you start as two shapes. You're two people. Um, so Gina mm-hmm. and I are both playing it. Uh, you rotate. You can rotate your character around a central axis. And when you okay. overlap the other person, you can click cut. And you cut that overlap out of the other person. And the objective sometime is you guys need to collectively make this shape out of your bodies. So you have to trim each other up to make that shape. Or hmm. you'll spawn a basketball and it'll fall from the ceiling. You have to get the basketball that drops on the left side into the hoop on the right. You don't have hands. So like you have to cut a bowl out of the top of someone. They'll catch the ball. They'll jump on you. You'll walk them across. You'll both have to jump so they can dunk the ball in. So it's like a multiplayer puzzle. Yes. It's game. a puzzle game where the mechanic hmm. is jumping on the other person and cutting the yep. other person into a specific shape needed to do the job. That sounds interesting. Like I've had to, like um, there's one where you have to sharpen a pencil that drops. I've had to cut, get cut into a ramp where she would run and push this pencil up me to get it up to where we needed. Hmm. It's, it's really interesting. It's really fun so far. Um, and once again, it's like played that. in the single, uh, the single Joy-Con configuration. And I'm really surprised. It works really fucking well. Um, nice. Mario Kart might be a little weird with it because that uses bumpers. But anything yeah. that doesn't need the bumper, or well, even if you don't need the bumpers quick, if there's something for like slow use, you're fine. So I think this single Joy Con configuration could actually work for a good bit of multiplayer games. I hope so. I don't see yeah. anyone using it like this, though. I, I see it for, for point in time built for single Joy Con multiplayer games. If I'm a developer, I'm not going to build my control set around assuming that there are only two buttons I, that someone can use. Two right. buttons? You have six. And a joystick. I guess, yeah. This is, that's what I'm saying. This is actually... I'm thinking a, of something completely different. It's a pretty yeah. good uh, button set. You can get a lot of stuff done with it. 
So you you could I I guess you could play Smash with just the Wii mode on its side. So yeah, you could play Smash four players with this. This would be easier to play Smash with than the Wii mode was. Okay. Hmm. Without the I guess chuck. that's true because you've got the analog stick. Yeah, yeah. If if you had a chuck, the chuck configuration is better than this. But this is better than the single Wii mode, hands down. <sighs> This this is interesting. I'm I'm really looking forward to how developers utilize this thing, or, or if it's going to be kind of one of those also ran features. Yeah, I was yeah. pleasantly surprised. I would not be shocked to see more games implementing this in their multiplayer modes. I mean, they're not going to build a game for this, but games like Bomberman and even Mario Kart, I can see them doing a way to work it on a single Joy-Con. I mean, I don't see why they wouldn't. And it allows the multiplayer feature to be a lot more accessible as well. Because then you yeah. buy a Switch for the kids and a Mario Kart for Christmas. And both the kids can play it at the same time because you've got two controllers in the pack. Yeah. And with the, the price of Nintendo's controllers, you know, not having to buy four complete Joy-Con <laughs> sets is probably a good and, idea. Yeah. And this is what I was telling you to check it back then because these are serviceable as one. When you drop 80, yeah. you are getting two controllers. That is a fact. One and a half controllers. Yeah. Well, I'm, still, I'm still skeptical about that well, center analog stick thing. No, it, no, sounds like, it sounds like the bro, here's your controller as he hands you this <laughs> mad cat's abomination. Okay, listen, I'm telling you, until you get your hands on a single Joy-Con, that center joystick is not as uncomfortable as you would think. It's weird at first, and then you just get used to it, and it is not bad. So demo units are available, right? Like, I could, I could go to GameStop tomorrow and, and get handsy with a Switch, right? I have not seen one yet. Oh, okay. Because mm. that's, that's like really going to be one. that's going to be my deal breaker. If I can, if I can walk, Buck Masterson is telling me that there are three left at my local Walmart. If I can go and get handsy with a switch <laughs> and and fall in love with the thing and then walk out with it, I just might. So the, they have issues with being able to do that because what people want to test with the switch is really hard for them to set up in an environment that they can be uh, theft safe. I mean, people yeah. want to check they, the real... They do it with iPads. Yeah, but the difference is the iPad doesn't have two expensive-ass things that come off the side of no, it. No, you just... You, they, they just, just put the yeah. security lock in it. It'll be yeah. fine. Where? How? I mean, these you things are small. If you put the lock something. on it, it completely fucks up the ergonomics of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a way to do it. Yeah, there's a way to do it. There's I can a think reason... of it in my head, but I don't know how to describe it in a concise way. Let's so. put it this way. But yeah, there's a way you, to you do just, it. You just they're not going. on display for a reason. Nintendo's not mm -hmm. hiding this console. It's hurting them not having it True. out there because this is remarkably made well. I said that if, weird again. If, but. If, they, if they would just get good, they could do it. I'm just saying that this console has surprised me. Um, the single Joy-Con has... I'm just floored by it. It works very well. Um, I was not expecting that at all. I was expecting this single Joy-Con to be something I would use for snipper clips, and that would be it. Now, how many yeah. cows have you sensually milked while while staring at someone in the eyes directly, <laughs> like staring as you're sensually milking the cow? I refuse to buy that game at full price. No That's way. That's probably a good idea. No yeah. way. Sixty dollars for a tech demo. Yeah, it's Wii Sports. Not really my thing. It's Wii Sports, and to me, it doesn't have the playability of Wii Sports. Wii Sports without. Bowling. Most of it. It like, is Wii Sports without here's bowling. Here's the mechanics of Wii Sports, <laughs> but you don't get to look at anything or see anything. So one of these controllers has a, <laughs> a near like a sensor that it can read in front of it. One of the mini games is to act like you're biting a sandwich, and it's going to measure how many bites you take to see how many sandwiches you ate in the time allotted. Are you serious? Yes. What is, is that? Why didn't they just call this WarioWare? Why call why no, no, no. bundle the fucking switch name into it? Call it WarioWare and be done with it. If they would have added 15 more quirky ass things and called it WarioWare, I may have bought it. But mm -hmm. as of right now, I'm hearing there's probably about three that you will want to play repeatedly, and that's it. It's like table tennis or something, isn't there? The table tennis I heard is really weird. Baseball is a good mm -hmm. idea, but it's yeah. also hard to uh, pull off. 
Um, I yeah. heard that the sword one's fun to do, like someone's slicing the sword and the other one's trying to catch it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a that could be cool. There's an the, HD the rumble one. thing. The gunslinger yeah. one's another big one, and the HD rumble one, where you have X number of marbles in a box and you're rolling it around, and based on the vibration, you have to guess how many balls are in the box. You see, that this... is a testament to how this rumble supposedly is. I've yet to yeah. have a game test it because I mean it's <laughs> Zelda; it's just rumbling to rumble. Right. I don't know how many real game applications you're going to have for that. But then again, I've never been exposed to it, so there could actually be some really cool ones. It yeah, sounds maybe. it sounds cool, but I, it's going to be one of these stupid little Nintendo features that never see the light of day and never get used ever again. Oh, I agree. It sounds I, I don't, yeah. It sounds gimmicky as hell, but the concept also opens up the possibility of some some kind of cool stuff. Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's 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 run down this list. Let's enumerate this. Gimmicky shit that no one's ever going to use. Underpowered console that's cheaper than the competition. Basically, no online multiplayer, and whatever's going to come out is going to be shit, undoubtedly. No, no, yep. it's no, a Nintendo console uh, necessarily. No, no, I'm calling it now. I'm calling it you now. Can't they roll are, it out just yet. They, they are going to go back to 2001. It's going to be like original Xbox Live, which was pretty good, but it's nothing compared to the Xbox Live we have today. And they're going to go, guys, look, we did it. We did it. Look, we made a table. We made a, a, a web page with tables and frames. It's going to be great. Have you guys heard of GeoCities? It's the best. They're being <laughs> much more liberal about their console it's actually here's my myspace it ties directly into social media with facebook and twitter i was able to unlike the 3ds which was a fucking nightmare i was able to add friends on the switch crazy easy compared to that it was just like xbox live you put in your friend you look it up you got them um it's i think this could they this is the most hope i've had for them for online I threw them under the bus on the Wii U, and it turned out to be just as bad as I thought it was going to be. I have faith in this one. I'm not saying this is going to be Xbox Live as it is right now, but I'm saying it'll at least be PSN. I'm, I'm hoping, but, uh, but we will find out, and you will hear all about it when we find out on the 72-Pin Connector podcast. So, nice. I think we're about done today. We have a fun gaming fact for you, brought to you by Tom Webster. Uh-oh. Okay, I've switched tabs. I've got my gaming fact now. Uh, so, I've got a Zelda gaming fact. Uh, this is about, uh, actually, one of the worst-rated Zelda games to ever come out. Uh, Zelda hmm. Skyward Sword, which was on the Wii. Um, and and it, was, it was just not good. Um, but the main theme for Skyward Sword is actually Zelda's lullaby, but played in reverse. Oh, really? Nice. N- Nintendo loves doing this, these little things with uh, the Zelda soundtrack where they either reverse something or slow it down or speed it up. And they're like, ah, totally new song. Just kidding. We're going to play on all your nostalgia bait and you're going to almost recognize a tune that you've always loved. That's cool. I like stuff like that. A little subtle, subtle musical things it was pretty cool the, the one thing i have never been able to knock nintendo on uh is their their music and, and their their yeah. composers they're just Abs- top notch absolutely. absolutely best teams in the business and they're really good at tying into nostalgia they know what the fuck they're doing yes they do okay well i think that's all we got for you um you should always check out our Twitter page, see what we've been up to, tell us how we've been doing, what you think, what you fucking hate about us, what you think we're doing okay. <laughs> um, you could always go check out our YouTube for all of our content. We're starting to add up more reviews, throw up our old podcast, clip some stuff out. You can find us at 72 Pin Connector. Um, you can send us an email if you want to tell us that way at fanmail at, se- eh, fanmail at 72 Pin Connector.com. And every Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, you should come check out this podcast live if you're listening to it delayed at twitch slash 72 pin connector. Twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector. Ah, uh, you got it. Well, People know how Twitch URLs work now. Yeah, you, you, uh, you, have so. you, you go You go to the Googles and then you type in the Twitch in connector, Twitcher. Twitch connector 72 <laughs> Twitter Yahoo and you'll get there. You'll find it <laughs> that, and you'll love it. Type that into the word. Into the word. Well, and anyway, that's all we got for you guys this week. So until next week, game on. Game on. Bye.
I want to play this Hype so bad. Hype harder. And... Hype harder. <laughs> ah! That's that's a lot of hype.